there's a few foods and nutrients that you want to give a little special love and attention to. So I'm going to pass over to you to jump into some of yeah. those. So, so before you get into what to eat, I want to just mention what not to eat if you want nice skin. <laughs> we talked about the oils and that's important because you want to have the right oils and most of us need an oil change. We need avocado oil, omega-3 oils, olive oil. Those should be your staples and skip all the other oils, all the processed oils, trans fat and so forth. Animal saturated fat is fine if it's from a regenerative raised cow, it's different, but, but mostly those are the fats. But the, the, the reality is that most people's skin looks terrible because of the amount of processed food and refined carbohydrates and sugar. So not only sugar, and carbohydrates, one of the number one source of acne, but it also it also drives inflammation and oxidative stress, which accelerate aging. There was a wonderful book by Nicholas Perricone called The Wrinkle Cure that I read years ago, which talked about the power of food to actually improve the quality of your skin. And he, he talks about upregulating obviously your omega-3s by eating wild salmon or wild fish like sardines, organ meats obviously, but also, um, cutting out all the processed food, sugar, and starch, which is just the basic vegan diet. And in addition, there's some really important nutrients that are important for skin. It's like vitamin A and vitamin C, um, vitamin E, antioxidants, help protect your skin. For example, beta carotene or the carotenoids, which from all the orange, yellow vegetables, sweet potatoes, avocados, they actually have UV protection. So when you, when you, when you look at some of the data, it's really interesting. If you take people who are sun exposed, if they eat these foods or if they take antioxidants, their skin doesn't get as damaged because there's antioxidant protection in the skin. There's this really cool machine that I saw years ago. It's a, a spectrophotometer. You basically put it on your skin and you get a score of your antioxidant score because it, it shines a light through and it can actually detect the level of antioxidants or carotenoids in your skin. Uh, and so, I mean, you can also get a fake tan by eating a lot of carrots. I did that once I was like on a carrot juice kick like 30 years ago. <laughs> it was a really bad idea. And I was like, wow, why am I so orange? That happened to Steve Jobs. <laughs> I'm like, so orange. <laughs> I'm like, I look like Donald Trump. <laughs> Just orange. <laughs> and, but, but it's important to eat that. And also biotin, which is really important. And that's found in more in organ meats and other things. Biotin is a very important B7, it's called B7 or biotin, your gut bacteria make it very important for your hair, skin, and nails. So, so making sure having adequate foods with these and even taking supplements can really be, really be helpful. You know, uh, a few years ago, I came across this book called Facercise. I don't, Facercise. Know, if you, I don't know if you've heard of this, but they're basically these facial movements that you can do and they like strength and it's like lifting weights for your face, but you just need to do certain movements. Oh so my God, that's hysterical. it's a way to like stretch your neck skin out and like, you have to do all these things. And I was thinking, you know, for a <laughs> while I was like really curious about it and I would do it. And I actually saw like interesting results. Like your, your, your face looks more defined and the muscles look more defined. And I was chatting about it with a friend. I was like, you know what? I think if you just live an active life, you have a lot of friends and you, you smile, laugh a lot, laugh a lot. Yeah. you laugh a lot. You hang out with people that make you laugh. Uh, you cry a lot, right? Yeah. You just like whatever yeah, the yeah. full range of yeah, emotions are. Exactly. And um, also I think working out, you know, the beautiful thing about working out is that you make all sorts of weird face contortions. You know, if you're doing like a deadlift or you're pushing I'm things out. I'm the tongue out guy. <laughs> you're the tongue out guy. I've seen that. Uh, so I think that's another way like to Michael incorporate Jordan. Another way to uh, incorporate it in without having to do, I mean, it's a lot of work to do those uh, well, exercises. My, right you remind me, my mother had this thing when we were growing up, I think it was called a Dynatone. And it basically had these two electrodes and it was like, it looked like a, it looked like a taser basically. <laughs> and, and she would put on her face, and make her face go like this and they're all their muscles contract in her neck. And she would like put on, I was like, wow, that is a weird thing. And I used to try to sneak in and try it. Yeah. But it's a kind of a facial, like a stimulation, sti electrical stimulation machine. Yeah. That's funny. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> Uh, all right, Mark, this is the part of the podcast where we go into some community questions from folks on the topic of aging. I know you're not a dermatologist, but everybody always wants to know, what are your thoughts on Botox? And, or are there resources that are out there that you could refer people to when it comes to, uh, well, let's start off with Botox first, right? People want to know. There's a lot of people that eat really healthy, live really active lives, other things like that. And then they feel like, well, I'm in a career or a place or whatever that I want to do a little bit of Botox. It just, I like the way that it looks for my skin. Are you worried about it? Are you neutral about it? Are you cautious about I'm it? I'm not so worried about Botox. I think it's a short acting compound that, you know, causes muscle paralysis that makes it look like you don't have wrinkles. Um, and I think that's fine if people want to do it for cosmetic reasons. I think, you know, the, you know, the 
I went out, I, I met this woman once who, she never went anywhere without an umbrella. <laughs> I'm like, what's up with the umbrella? She's like, son. And she literally had an umbrella wherever she went and never went out <laughs> without her umbrella. And, uh, and, uh, and her skin, you know, 50 years old, looked like she was 20. So it, 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 skin is highly damaged by the sun. And my skin clearly has been damaged by the sun because I like to be outside a lot and I don't always put sunblock on or I should, but I forget sometimes. So I think that there's a, a really important um, way to protect yourself from sun damage by, which, 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 which leads to the need for all these by wearing sunblock and the right kinds of sunblock. I encourage people to go to ewg.org, the Environmental Working Group, where they have a, a database called Skin Deep. And it's a beautiful way to look up different products for your skin, including sunblocks, to find out which have the least toxins. Because I had a woman who had, was always using sunblock and she had high levels of parabens in her body and it was kind of toxic. And so I want to be careful with that. Also, there, there's a lot of techniques that actually help rejuvenate the skin that are available to people, including lasers and microdermabrasion and fillers and a lot of stuff people are doing. And I don't have any judgment about it. I think it's fine. I think, I think where, I, where I have a problem with it is when people focus on that and don't also focus on beauty from the inside out. Right, because that friend of yours, again, no judgment on the situation or whatever, she was protecting her, her skin from the sun, but if you don't have regular sun exposure, there's a whole other thing, a whole host of other things you're missing Light out. Vitamin D deficiency, right. And, and your uh, circadian rhythm is not synced with a day. I have uh, a, a friend who is an esthetician here in LA, and uh, she, everywhere she goes, she wears a sun mask and, and carries an umbrella and other stuff, and I... Again, people can do anything that they want to do, but uh, we obsess over one thing and we might be losing out on other stuff. Not to mention the joy. If you're constantly worried about sun and you think the sun is doing something to yeah. you all the time, yeah, it's then, uh, yeah, it's a problem. Instead of just being smart, right? Yeah, and I, you know, I had a lot of sun damage on my skin from just years of being in the sun, and I, and I actually went um, to dermatologist. Like they, they can actually look at this skin through these incredible fluorescent imaging things and you see all these precancerous spots. So I had a treatment that kind of cleared all that stuff and all these spots, like literally all these precancerous lesions fell off. There's also- What was that treatment called? Just in there's case laser treatments, looking. fractal lasers. There's also creams like 5-FU that dermatologists use to deal with, with you know, kind of cleaning up all the surface damage. Uh, and there's ways to build collagen in the skin naturally. So there's a lot of really exciting dermatologic advances in looking younger uh, and we just had Tony Robbins on our podcast and Peter Diamandis talking about their book, Life Force. And there's a whole section in there on what's emerging in the world of skin rejuvenation and dermatology. So it's kind of exciting. I mean, uh, the future looks even more wild. I mean, we're, or we're going to be able to actually reprogram our cells back to younger cells through really cool technologies that seem sci-fi, but I think are around the corner, such as, for example, through process of gene editing, inserting combination of genes that have been discovered called the Yamanaka factors that can be switched on to reprogram your cells to reverse back to their embryonic state. We call those inducible pluripotent stem cells. And those st those, those undefined stem cells could then re-differentiate into whatever tissue organ. So skin rejuvenation, there's, there's just so much fun stuff coming down the road. So not only will you be able to live to be 120, but you'll be able to look maybe 60 at 120. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that we'll share in here, and I'm sure you'll talk about it in your conclusion, is that we want people to look however they want to look, right? At the end of the day, be happy with yourself, and there's a sense of just accepting yourself and however you want to show up. So this is really not a conversation about looks. It's really that the way, the byproduct of feeling good is that also the likelihood is you tend to look good as well, too, if you want to do those things, comparatively to what the baseline would be if you're eating a standard processed diet that's out there. So number one, we want people to feel great because when you feel great, you can give love and attention to all the things in life that truly matter. And that's way more than just your looks. It's being there for your grandkids. It's being able to show up for your partner. It's being able to give back to the world. It's being able to make a difference in your spiritual or church community that's out there. It's being able to give back or build a business or whatever it might be, make a difference. So that's why we want to feel good. And as a byproduct of that, because we know we'll catch some people's attention who are focused on wanting to look better, nothing wrong with that. The best way to do that is from the inside out. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here.
I think that's really important to understand that there are critical windows or critical time frames that it's even more important to reduce exposure. And one of those classic time frames is when a woman is pregnant. Um, even little bits of exposures in utero may 